Hello and welcome to the Tech Unplug videocast. I'm your host, Max Mortilaro, live from London at the WAN Summit. And I have the great pleasure to be here today with Sanjay Upal. You're, uh, Sanjay, welcome. Thank you. So, Sanjay, you are leading the VMware uh, SD1 VeloCloud division, right? That's correct. I run the uh, VeloCloud business unit at VMware. Prior to that, I used to run VeloCloud Networks as the co-founder and CEO. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you, Sanjay. So, Sanjay, can you tell us a bit more about what is VeloCloud's mission, uh, how you uh, are helping companies with SD1, and what kind of, what are you trying to, what is the challenge you're trying to solve? Yeah, so what has happened over the last several decades is that networking hasn't really transformed the way that applications and compute has, tra has transformed. So application and compute, because of the advent of virtualization, it's become a lot more agile, a lot more flexible, but networking always stayed in this kind of hub and spoke, statically defined with pin down underlays. By underlays, we mean the underlying network that usually is provided by a telco or a cable company. Mm -hmm. So we realized this about six or seven years ago that networking, specifically wider networking, also needed to get transformed. And what we came up with is an architecture that brought in the cloud, and so we used to say that the cloud is the network. So network virtualization in the wide area is what VeloCloud does, and that's the basis of our software-defined wide area network architecture. Very good. So when you say the cloud is a network, you are meaning that the cloud is helping, uh, you're using the cloud as a kind of overlay which goes on top of, let's say, traditional co co connectivity mechanisms such as MPLS lines and so on? Or are you talking also about services which are cloud delivered? So there's actually several aspects to what the cloud does in terms of software-defined WAN. The first piece of this is what you articulated, which is that what ST-WAN is, is we build an overlay. And the overlay really allows you to steer traffic, so depending on what your applications are, the traffic is steered over different underlays. The underlay can be your MPLS, it can be broadband, it can be 4G, now maybe 5G. There's many different underlay mechanisms. So the first thing that software-defined WAN does is this ability to steer applications based on a policy that the enterprise sets. But then the cloud plays a much more important role in terms of where the applications are situated. So now applications used to be in the public cloud or in the private cloud, but now they're leaving that they're actually getting much closer to where uh, the edges are. So applications now could literally be anywhere. And so the cloud becomes a really important fabric in order to connect all these things together. We call this the network of clouds. You could have a security cloud and a mid-mile cloud, an analytics cloud, a public cloud, SaaS, IaaS, all of these are different clouds. The underlying substrate that connects them all together is software-defined WAN. Mm -hmm. So, how do customers can you know adopt this journey from moving from traditional networking into this uh, let's say cloud-to-cloud uh, -cloud fabric that you're advocating for? What, how difficult is that? So, it's actually fairly straightforward because it's software-defined. You don't have to get new hardware infrastructure every three or five years. You don't have to sign up with long-term contracts to get that done. So the first step in the journey is to do a proof of concept once you've set the business criteria of what you want accomplished. Because if you just jump into it from a tactical standpoint and say, I want to save 30%, you'll end up with one type of solution. But if you take a step back and say, what's the business criteria? I want to be more agile. I want to be more flexible. I'm going through a digital transformation. The network should transform along with it. Or I'm on a cloud migration journey. When you look at it from that standpoint and you have a set of business criteria, then the architecture that, will, that you will adopt will lead you to this kind of software-defined cloud type of architecture. And the first step that you would take after defining the business criteria is to run what we call a production proof of concept, a production POC. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to jump in there, define a few of your sites that should be connected to, uh, to each other as well as to the applications that, uh, that they need access to using a software-defined architecture. Your network engineers and your business people will then see the value that, uh, that is made available through visibility, through break fix, through the performance improvements, through a better software-defined platform architecture, and then that will accrue, the benef benefits will accrue, and then you can get on to a much wider deployment. Mm -hmm. So, Sajay, so uh, I think you've been quite successful in the area of SD-1. Uh, can you tell us a bit about the major use cases that your customer are coming you, to you uh, to, to discuss and to adopt your solution? Sure, so actually the use cases, there are some horizontal use cases that are applicable across all verticals, and then there are some vertical-specific use cases. So if I start with the latter, 
just to give you an example, mm -hmm. in the architecture, engineering, and construction vertical, what we call the AEC vertical, what is very important is speed of deployment. So let's say you're a construction company and you win a new project. Mm -hmm. When you get your people to go to that project site, you want the network to be up and running mm -hmm. you know, within a few hours. Mm -hmm. Now what used to happen before is the network engineers and the construction people used to go in there and set up laptops with USB LTE dongles. Mm -hmm. Well then, it's not a managed network. You know, Your construction site is not a branch office. But after VeloCloud has come in, you could literally set up that branch office within a few hours. Mm -hmm. So that's a vertical specific use case. From a horizontal specific standpoint, getting an overlay to be agile so mm -hmm. that you can mix and match underlays, that's a very common use case. Mm -hmm. Getting um, visibility across your network from an application standpoint, that's a very common use case. Mm -hmm. um, getting a large number of sites to be part of one network and then do segmentation so that you can actually bifurcate which applications end up where and what kind of security mm -hmm. profile, that's a pretty common use case. So there are actually common use cases that you would find that are horizontal across all verticals and then you could find vertical specific use cases. Now with about 5,800 customers, we've seen possibly you know, every type of use case, at least so far. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, do you see uh, large enterprises going uh, full on into SD1 to just eliminate all of the, let's say, challenges that they're having at the moment with lease lines, with uh, uh, complexities, whatever they need to do, maintenance on networks? Do you, do you see that, you know, going forward, I mean, or increasing in the next, I don't know, 24 months, 36 months, or do you see that it's going to be a longer journey to get there? So I think the answer to that really is depends, because if the, if the network is very large, then you're not going to be able to physically make that move over a very short period of time. But I've seen no hesitation from either the smallest uh, enterprise to some of the largest enterprises in terms of jumping in and doing things. This is very different even mm -hmm. two years ago when there was hesitation because people thought, you know, is this architecture secure enough? Is it really going to give me the performance benefits? What do I need to do in terms of training my people? Mm -hmm. But now we're seeing a lot of pull. Enterprises will come to us and say, you know, we've decided we want an SD WAN, mm -hmm. please help us on this journey, or they'll go to our partners, you know, telcos, service providers, MSPs, value added resellers. So we are being pulled into a lot of opportunities now where even two to three years ago, mm -hmm. you know, wanted to go and evangelize what the benefits of SD WAN were. Okay. So you had a good point about uh, you know working with partners. How is the um, customers who want to work with you? Do they go directly to you? Can they engage with uh, you know vendors or I mean uh, sorry VARs or any cloud partners? What is the kind of the way to to get in touch with you? And I guess that you said it before, uh, the POC is the right way to start. So yeah. do they get straight in touch with you? So so we actually do recommend a production POC. Mm -hmm. Customers can always get in touch with us, but in terms of working with partners we will always deliver and work with a partner. The reason is just simply because of scale. You know, there are customers out there who work with their mm -hmm. MSPs, who work with their VARs, mm -hmm. they trust them. And that trust relationship, we don't want to come in the middle of that trust relationship. Besides that, several, several customers want to work with their telco partners. Mm -hmm. But what we want to do is facilitate. We want to increase the speed of deployment. Mm -hmm. So we work hand in glove with the partners, Customers can come to us directly, but we will always fulfill through partners. Okay, very good. Sanjay, one last thing you would like to share with the audience, perhaps about why customers should go and adopt VeloCloud as a solution? Yeah, I think you know it really comes down to what is the architecture and what is the business benefit that people are looking for. So we think that there's a major transformation going on. This is not just yet another networking technology. It's really a business transformation. It starts off with that. And then when your digital transformation is set, the underlying network transformation needs the right architecture. For us, it's a client to cloud to container architecture. Within that cloud, there's a network of clouds. And we think that there's only one company, VMware, that can get you there because we have the network virtualization, we have the data center virtualization, we're going heavy in with security, with these new acquisitions that we've done. And from a build standpoint, we know where the next generation of modern apps are going to be. They're going to be built with containers. So it's really a client to cloud to container architecture. And we think that we are the best suited to serve customers who are looking at it from that mm -hmm. perspective. Absolutely. I think you're right, Sanjay. I cannot agree more with you. We'll be at VMworld as well. So we're looking forward to see how VeloCloud plays into the whole uh, Dell Technologies VMware ecosystem. Thank you so much, San uh, Sanjay. And have a good day. Thank you. Thanks Thank very you. much. Bye. Bye-bye.